Let's talk about Amazon EKS hybrid nodes and see how this new feature simplifies Kubernetes management across cloud, on-premises, and edge environments. So whether you need to run Kubernetes on-premises in your data center or at the edge in your manufacturing plant, this demo should help you get started with Amazon EKS hybrid nodes. The first thing we need to understand here is what the test environment looks like. So on the right-hand side, we have our on-premises network, which is a VMware environment running in a Denver-based lab that is connected to US West 2 in Oregon over AWS site-to-site -site VPN uh, connected through Transit Gateway. So on the right-hand side, we have two VMs running in VMware hybrid node 01 and hybrid node 02. On the left side, we have our Amazon EKS cluster running in uh, Oregon US West 2. So the first thing we're gonna do is create an AWS, or we're gonna use AWS CloudFormation to create our EKS cluster. First, we're gonna run through what's in our environment right now. So we've got a few environment variables that we're gonna load up. Most importantly here is the the VPC that I'm going to be installing to, but then we have these two new values here that are going to be passed to our EKS cluster that define the remote pod network uh, for the remote node network and the remote pod network. And this is so the control plane can talk to the kubelet and talk to any pods that might be running if we had things like webhooks running. So we're going to load those environment variables up and we can take a look at how our cluster is going to be configured. Most importantly, again, we see our remote pod network and remote uh, node network. Those match the values up here. This is what's going to get passed to CloudFormation when we create the cluster. So we're going to go create the cluster now. It is now several minutes later and our cluster is being created. So let's go take a look at it now. Again, cluster name is loaded in our environment variable. So there we go. There's all the information about our cluster. Again, this is a standard EKS cluster with new hybrid nodes uh, functionality in it. So specifically here, we have our remote network config and our remote pod network config that the cluster knows about. So now the cluster knows how to route down uh, to, to our hybrid nodes. We're going to update our kubectl uh, configuration here. So there we go. So now if we do kubectl get nodes, we'll see that there's nothing there. So now we can start working on that. We need to drop in a few more parameters here to, to make that happen. So we created our EKS clusters. So now we're going to configure our EKS access controls. We're going to use two more environment variables here. One, which is just the name of our hybrid nodes, uh, IAM role SSM. I've created this previously uh, via CloudFormation, a separate CloudFormation. And then what is the actual ARN uh, for that node? So now we have those two, two values there. So now we can go create our access entries for the, for the hybrid nodes themselves. Great. And then in order for us to access the cluster happily from uh, the browser, we actually need to give my role uh, permission to, to see that. So first thing we're going to, uh, this is a big blob of text, but we're going to paste in um, creating our access entry that allows my admin role permissions. And then we're going to give my admin role the EKS admin policy and Amazon EKS cluster admin policy, which will give us permissions uh, later. So we're, we're basically making those associations here. Next, we are going to create our Systems Manager hybrid activations. So Systems Manager is going to give us the ability to associate an IAM role with our Linux instances. So first thing we need there is to create our activation, which we're going to do here. And if we look at the activation file, we can see it has an activation ID and an activation code. Don't worry, everybody, security-minded folks, this file, this, these tokens uh, expire automatically after a little bit of time. So we've created our activation. We're going to use that activation to now create 
a node config file. So we're basically just getting the, the activations out of that JSON file. So now we have a we have a node config. Whoops, we have a node config file here with our activation set in it. And we're going to send that file to our nodes uh, over SCP. So we're just going to upload that file uh, to each of the um, nodes, to each of our hybrid nodes, right? Node 01 and Node 02. So our activations are ready. Our node config is in place. So now we can actually uh, have node ADM install all of our dependencies and initialize our hybrid node. If we go to node 02, or node 01, sorry, we're not at node 02 yet. This is node 01. So we're going to tell this to go install our components. And we'll go over to node 02 and we'll do the same thing. So both of these nodes are now installing all of our things. Dialing IML. Okay. There goes. That guy's almost done. We're just waiting for this one to finish. There we go. So node 01, node 02 are both finished installing. So now we have our config file that we already uploaded to these nodes. So we have our node config there with our activation tokens in it. And we're going to have node ADM initialize this node using that configuration. This is node 01. We're going to go do the same on node 02. And boom, there's node 01 is all finished. Okay, so our Linux machines have been configured. We have our SSM agents, the node ADM tooling, everything is all done running. Our next step is to install a container network interface or CNI driver. Since we're not running in AWS, the VPC CNI, which we would have by default in EKS, is not, uh, not available for us. So we're going to install uh, Cilium as our, as our solution here. Go back to our, our host machine here, which is actually my laptop. We're going to add Cilium. We're going to take a look at our values here. Now, most importantly, our pod cider, again, if we look at our cluster parameters, we can see that our pod cider here matches our remote, remote pod cider here. So this is telling Cilium, I want you to use this cider for, uh, for, for IP addresses for my pods. And then we're telling the EKS hybrid nodes cluster that this is the um, cider for our remote pods. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and install Cilium. Okay. Cilium has completed its install. So now if we do kubectl get nodes, we can see we have two nodes up and running, ready to go uh, with our workload. So let's continue on with configuring Cilium a little bit, we need to enable BGP, right? So this is going to uh, basically allow BGP routing of our pod network. So let's go ahead and apply that. And great. And now if we go take a look at everything that's running, so now we can see Core DNS and Kube Proxy showed up. Those are actually provided by EKS. Those are managed by EKS. So those are running automatically on our nodes. And then we installed uh, Cilium. So that's running as our CNI driver now. The next thing we're going to do is add load balancing. So again, in the cloud, we would use uh, AWS load balancers. We would use AL application load balancers and network load ba balancers, ALBs and NLBs on premises. If we want to keep our local traffic local, we're going to uh, configure Cilium to provide Kubernetes load balancer services here. So if we take a look at pool, we're saying if Kubernetes asks for a load balancer, if something in the Kubernetes cluster asks for a load balancer, Cilium is going to provide the answer to that, and it's going to use an IP address from this pool here. Okay, so we have our Cilium load balancer pool configured. Let's apply that now. Oh, 
We'll do a quick test with Nginx. We're going to just run that directly in our cluster here. Boom. We are going to expose that. So if we do kubectl expose, our pod Nginx will ask for a load balancer. If we do kubectl get services. Okay, there we go. So now what we get, once we do kubectl get services, we get an IP address using our external IP, which we saw is in our, well, it's up here, uh, which we have up here. We're saying start with 248, and there is 248, right? So we do kubectl port forward. We'll do localhost 8080 to our pod at 80. Okay. Bring this over here. We go to localhost 8080. Hooray, we get Nginx, right? So that's great. So now we know that all works. We have our load balancer. Let's go do something a little more complex. So for our more complex example, we're going to do the Kubernetes example application of deploying the PHP guestbook application with Redis, okay? Over here, we have our Redis leader. And this is deploying two things, right? This is deploying a uh, Redis leader as a deployment. And then down here, we're deploying a Redis service. And then we're going to do the same with a Redis follower. Again, a deployment and service. This is a bit over-engineered as far as examples go, but it'll get the point across. We'll apply, oops. We'll apply our Redis leader. Great. We will apply our Redis follower. If we do get pods, we can see these are running. And if we actually do dash O wide, we can see these are running on two different managed instances. If we do our final step, which is to apply the front end, if we look at our front end, this is another deployment um, running a PHP application, uh, getting hosts from DNS. And this one, most specifically, this is requesting a load balancer. So if we do to kubectl get services again, well, now we can see a whole bunch of cluster IP services. We still have our Nginx example, but now we have our front end has a load balancer here. If we do, a, if we do port forward for the service front end from 8080 to 80, if we come over to our browser window, well, now we have our localhost 8080 message book. Hello there. Hybrid nodes are awesome. Okay. So now again, if we go over here, shut that down. If we go over here and get odds, We can now see there's a whole bunch of pods running, again, distributed amongst our two different hybrid nodes. And our services, whoops, and get services, we can see we have load balancers running for 249 and 248. So if we go to like one of our nodes here, This is in our VMware network. We can curl that load balancer IP. And we can see our Nginx page running there. So that's exposing an IP address to our network for load balancing purposes. So that, again, is uh, just to over emphasize where this is all running. So hybrid node 01 and hybrid node 02, where all of our pods are running right now, are running in Denver in a VMware environment. 
That network is connected via AWS site to site VPN with my VPC in Oregon, US West 2, which is where my EKS cluster is running. So the Kubernetes control plane is running in Oregon. The hybrid node worker is running on premises in my uh, VMware environment. And that concludes our demo. Thank you so much for your time.